very good morning from the KTN News Center, the 2017 Election HQ. My name is Ben Kitili. It is the 13th day of August 2017. We are here to take stock of uh, the just concluded uh, general election with a special focus on the presidential poll. Uh, we're taking stock of uh, the results, uh, the reaction to the results, what has been happening, how the uh, various uh, electoral uh, positions have taken, have continued to take shape, how the the 12th parliament is likely to look like. My guests are already here in the studio to help me take a look at those things in studio I have with me. Uh, Professor Oeri Tumbo, governance expert, of course, not new on the show. He has been here with us during this electioneering period. Hezbon Owila. I have uh, Jubilee strategist Mutina Kavemba and political risk analyst uh, 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 Dismas Mokua. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining uh, us uh, in the morning, in the studio this morning. We haven't been on this show, although it's not Sunday edition yet. We are still on that Kivumbi 2017, trying to keep up with the story for, for our viewers. Thank you for joining us. Let's uh, start with the, our political pages, of course, uh, try and see what the papers are saying this morning. Um, there is a lot being reported on the reaction of the announcement uh, by, the elector by the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission, uh, IBC, of the presidential results. Uh, on on uh, Friday nights, of course, uh, of Fula Chibukati finally making that uh, awaited announcement, handing President Uru Kenyatta that uh, certificate. There, were, there have been uh, some protests uh, in some parts of the country. I want us to talk about that. That, that has been a very, of course, very sensitive story which we have to tread very carefully. But of course, it is a story that is happening and we have kept up with it. Uh, let me start with you, Dismas. Um, human rights groups say more than a dozen people have lost their lives. The government says nobody has lost their lives. Um, there have been protests, demo, demonstra demonstrations. Uh, the CS Matiangi did say that these are goons, but of course we have uh, reports of a very strong response uh, from the security agencies. Where would you put the status of things as we, as we sit right now? Well, uh, in, uh, in my view, demonstrations, uh, picketing is a constitutional right for anybody in Kenya. You don't need anybody's permission to engage in a picketing demonstrations. And not only in Kenya, all over the world. If there's an issue that you are happy with or unhappy with, you've got the responsibility to go to the streets and engage in any kind of demonstration. And in doing so, you must be sure not to break the law. For instance, if you are demonstrating, uh, maybe you are an ASA supporter, you are unhappy with the declaration that President Kenyatta has been reelected. You can knock yourself dead while doing demonstrations, provided you do not break the law, provided you do not start uh, interfering with people's property or uh, lives. If you're doing it in a peaceful manner, then the security agencies are under obligation to actually give you security as you engage in picketing and uh, demonstration. But uh, if it gets into a place that uh, you become violent, you're burning property, you want to kill others, then the security agencies are invited to come and uh, restore peace and order. You know, just maintain uh, law and order. And there's so many people who are giving a number of figures, but I think uh, the, there's a government institution, the Kenya National Human Rights Commission, right. which gave uh, figures uh, last year <coughs> of, uh, I think, about 27 people who have already died, a number of nursing uh, bullet wounds. And these, these are issues that are demand um, a very serious investigation. Because, you know, the, the constitution we have in Kenya is all about uh, protecting lives and property. So every single Kenyan must be protected. If you are unhappy with that decision, if you are happy with that decision, you can go to the streets, make your voice uh, well known. If you're frustrated, make your voice well known, and then go back uh, all your peace. And this is not just limited to Kenya. A good example is in the US. When uh, Donald Trump was uh, declared uh, president, a number of Democrats were happy. They went around the streets doing the demonstrations. For the few that opted uh, to start, uh, you know, interfering with people's lives and properties, then uh, actions were taken. But in my view, picketing is allowed. If there's anybody who's got issue with picketing a demonstration, then let's review our constitution and pull it away, delete that section, so that uh, you are not allowed to go to the streets to engage in picketing or demonstrations. All right, Kavemba, without pointing any fingers, of course we have uh, those who are demonstrating, uh, you know, protesting uh, the election uh, results, and we have the response by the police. Um, how would you describe, uh, uh, you know, action by both sides? You know, uh, this must has correctly put it, that the most important thing is uh, to maintain law and order and to secure life 
and property. And uh, sometimes in some of these situations, it is very difficult to create that balance. Because, uh, you know, when people go out there, sometimes property is destroyed. Sometimes even uh, people of political you know, positions that are different from the people who are demonstrating at times also get hurt. And, uh, you know, it, it, it is about uh, probably prevention is better than than cure. And uh, I, I think that is the balance that the police have been trying to, to, to create. Because if you look at what happened, for instance, in, uh, in, uh, in Kibera, it, uh, it has been about containing, containing the demonstrations and picketing within a certain area and not allowing it to spill over to where it might uh, cause probably more damage to life and uh, property. Right. And uh, I am not sure whether we should condemn them for that because at the end of the day, that's what I'm saying. It, it's not as easy as people want to believe because uh, yeah, people who are coming and who clearly are very mad and it's not like they are carrying twigs. I think you've seen how the roads look like. That tells you how these demos are. And uh, it's really unfortunate, actually, I have to say that, that we've lost life. <coughs> because this, this was quite an orderly process right. of election and uh, how it has turned out to be what it is now is probably what we need to look at because right. I, don't, I don't think what is happening is justified going by how we conducted this election through right. the campaign. Let me disrupt you a bit, uh, yes. Mutinda. Yes. And of course, uh, we have been keeping an eye on this story, following it up for our viewers. And the National Super Alliance leaders have been calling on uh, their supporters not to engage the police. Let's now cross live to the county of Kisumu, where a section of leaders, including the governor-elect in Kisumu, Professor Nyang Nyongo, are addressing the press on the same issue. Some of them are even people. That's what we are saying. No, no. We are going to move around with the police. We are appealing to them, and I hope you help us appeal to them. Please, this, you see, that, those kind of roadblocks is what invites the police to come and use force to remove them, because you are not allowed as a civilian to block traffic of any kind, however aggrieved you are. Uh, I think there's a habit that emerged in this country that when they were grieved, you go and burn tires on the road. First of all, <laughs> one of the sad things is that you destroy the road. You have seen when you burn a tire on a tarmac road, you leave a hole there. That's an expense to the county or the national government. It takes away the money that should go to buy medicine in the hospitals and in dispensaries and churches. I think we should graduate from that kind of protest and protest civilly. I mean, carry twigs, you know, shout your slogans, you know, let people know that you're disgusted, but don't destroy any property, including the road. The road is a public property. <coughs> don't destroy it by burning, burning tires on it. I think it may serve your interest at the moment, but later the county and the county pays rather expensive price for it. Yeah. Akuna Maswali? There were also claims that uh, Obunga, Nyalenda, and Manyata police broke into houses and uh, yeah. people. Yes, we have reported that to uh, Commander Yoma yesterday. Uh, we even have videos yeah. of people, police, yeah. actually twangering doors yeah. and breaking. That, that, that we've caught. You know, these days of, of smartphones, you can't do something and get away with it, thinking you're not being seen. So those are true. Uh, we have seen video tapes on that and we're going to bring it up in our meeting today with the community leaders and with the police yeah and we want that to be investigated further i mean they should know who was on duty where and uh, and where the complaints are coming from and we'd like the press to help us if you know a particular shop or owner that was uh, uh, destroyed by the police, if you could get those people come to us so that they report specific experiences, it would help. I think the press is much better placed to investigate that kind of thing, come out with evidence. But again, we condemn. That is completely unacceptable. We yeah. did tell the county commander yesterday that we do not expect his 
people, the policemen, so to speak, to go and harass people in a manner that you are highlighting. And we're asking our people who may have fallen victims of such uh, uh, actions from the police to kindly come up and report. We already have some uh, evidence, as we said, that we'll be sharing with them, and we expect them to take action on the officers who went ahead to break uh, our people's doors and to, to harm them in any way. Yeah. OK. Yeah. Thank you. Now, uh, I will brief you. Uh, yeah, we'll need to uh, let them know we are making a tour. Uh, Governor elect County of Kisumu, Professor Nyang Nyongo, there addressing uh, the press, of course, addressing some of those concerns about the protests that have, have been witnessed in some parts of the country, including the County of Kisumu. And um, I was with you, you you're saying something, yes. Jindai, and the, the NASA leaders have they addressed their supporters, uh, who have been, been the people who have been protesting adequately from where you sit? Uh, I, I actually, I, I don't think they addressed them, but I think they gave them the lee, the, 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 the go ahead to do some of the things, not probably the way they are doing them. And I think that's why the governor elect for Kisumu is trying to show them how they expect it to be done. Because you see, when you invite violence, when you start engaging in violent activities, you, you are actually also probably unconsciously inviting violence. But if Kenyans, Kenyans, the, the, the most important thing would be to start getting lessons on nonviolent protests. We have seen protests that have hundreds of thousands of people in other countries where no single life is lost and where no property is damaged. Now, <coughs> in this country, we have a challenge with uh, going through peaceful and nonviolent protests. I think that is the lesson because that is what our constitution envisages. And that is what the, we, are, we have a right to. We do not have a right to cause violence. We do not have a right to destroy property. We do not have a right to attack or even threaten anybody's life as we do our thing. But yes, I agree with uh, this much that the Constitution gives Kenyans right to picket, to demonstrate. But there is what is envisaged. That is what we need to start doing. It is very non-violent. It is very peaceful. And uh, even the organizers of this demo, now that we've learned through experience that there are some people who don't mean well and who even take advantage of people who want to demonstrate or picket within the constitution, then there needs to be inbuilt mechanisms by the organizers of these demos to right. ensure that there is no room for those who are out to cause mischief. Because you know when people are many, there are some who will come because they want to steal, they want to use that confusion to loot, and you, you, you as the organizer need to be conscious of that going by past experiences and ensure that you have an inbuilt security mechanism within the demo itself to ensure that you single out and probably deal with those who want to cause mischief. All right. I, I, that's what I would say. Hesbon, do you think, let's talk about the police and uh, a lot has been said. What uh, Mutinda is saying, do you think police have been able to, to separate from, um, you know, the goons who are looting, who are taking advantage of the protest to loot and people who are demonstrating as is their constitutional right? Uh, have police been able to you know, get that intelligence and deal with everybody in a lawful manner. Uh, I think that is where the, the, the problem has been, yeah, that it is difficult for the police, for instance, to deal with the criminal activities uh, among the few individuals who are part and parcel of these demonstrators, you know, because, uh, uh, again, agreeing with what Dismas and Kavemba have said, uh, the law is very clear. Actually, at Article 137 is very clear that all Kenyans have a right to peacefully and unarmed. And, and you know, those two key terms are rarely, you know, addressed. That one, they need to be very peaceful, and number two, they need to be unarmed. And of course, they are given the right to picket, demonstrate, and present petitions to authorities. So the police have found it difficult, you know, to deal with the criminal activities within the people who are peacefully demonstrating with the intention of presenting a petition, you know. But I, I think, uh, just like uh, Mutinda said, it is incumbent upon uh, the demonstrators and the political leaders uh, to exercise caution in terms of letting these people know that it is a demonstration. And therefore, you have to deal with the criminal activities amongst the people who take advantage of this demonstration. Mm -hmm. And I want to identify strongly with the words of Professor Nyang Nyongo, you know, that uh, there are 
common things that benefit <coughs> all citizens in this country. Roads, uh, social amenities, and to the extent that you have people who are armed, we, we, be it with crude weapons or even stones, then they are, re they are making the demonstration in, in itself become a criminal activity that is even targeting things that benefit them in the society. You know, from uh, my home county of Migori, life has become a little bit difficult. You know, is it because uh, of, of, of uh, the, the, the outcome? Chances are, yes, because you look at the outcome of the presidential election and you would be alive to the fact that Kenyans are actually going through a cocktail of emotions. Mm -hmm. Now, the way in which they express those emotions is clearly defined in the Constitution. And I think the police should be clear on to what extent do they need to protect the people who are demonstrating peacefully and are unarmed and the extent to which they should deal with the criminal activities among these people. So that if there are people who are demonstrating, they should not stop other businesses from going on. All right. Prof, um, the state, the government says nobody has been killed. A human rights group says 24 people, say 24 people have already lost their lives in these altercations between protesters and police. Would you say police is using excessive force? Um, we have seen pictures uh, of live ammunition in some, being in some, paraded in along. In some situations, first of all, I want to contribute to the sentiments that have been expressed by my fellow panelists, that generally speaking, we know what is in the Constitution. Now, what we are dealing with here is, um, I think, the demonstrator and uh, the police, uh, d does each one of them understand their roles effectively? In my view, the police seem to have forgotten the facilitative element of their assignment. In other words, can you facilitate even a very angry person to express their opinion peacefully and loudly? All right? That, that's one. The second one, do you, uh, can you make an arrangement to contain the one who is very, very angry, all right, and is out of control? Can you manage to control this person without necessarily injuring this person. Now, to me, the last resort of using uh, live ammunition is when the lives of the police and the other Kenyans are directly and very closely threatened. But in some of the situations that we have seen, uh, the police have clearly uh, overstepped the limits. Now, in my view, this is a work in progress. Um, police are being educated to move away from the, uh, the enemy uh, <coughs> attitude that every demonstrator is an enemy to a policeman. In the old days, and I can tell you this, Ben, in the old days, whenever policemen were sent to control uh, a crowd, and the crowd behaved well, Police used to get so angry that some of them used to tell me, Tulikuja kufanya nini? What did we come to do since we haven't dealt with anybody? Now, there are still elements in the force that have retained that mentality. These are the and ones... You need to beat up people yes, who have dealt with to, to, be, to, to show that you have your kazi. Okay. Now, there, these are the ones that will need rehabilitation, further education, so that we all are talking from the same... Uh, right. level when it comes to uh, protests and uh, picketing and so forth. This must, how, how serious is this? A girl, a nine-year-old girl was killed by a stray bullet. I mean, how, how serious is this on, on, on the responsibility of the police? You know, my, my understanding of the police work in Kenya, they're supposed to be like a police service, not a police force. What we are now seeing is a police force. Like, for instance, when uh, you see a kid of that age uh, being shot and uh, killed, I doubt whether that kid had a weapon. I doubt whether the kid was armed. And I don't know whether that was uh, a stray bullet. And there is no justification at all. The, the Kenya police service needs to understand that picketing, demonstrating is a constitutional. It's a fundamental human right. And uh, when you come across people who are demonstrating or, you are, you, or who are picketing, because you've been trained as a police officer, you should be able to pick out the criminal elements and actually separate people who are demonstrating because they want to pass a message, pick out the criminal elements and uh, deal with them with the full force of the law. And uh, ju just let people frustrate their, rather let people vent out their frustrations. Because right now, 
there is a 50% of the nation who, who, who say that the election was not free, fair, nor credible. And they want to be given the opportunity to vent out their frustration. Right. And the only way they can vent out their frustration is uh, not going to the top of uh, Mount Kenya or KSCC and committing suicide. Is assembling in groups, going to the town hall squares and venting their frustration. And the police should actually give them an uh, escort, a very good ex escort, and secure them. But pick out, using a surgical operation, pick out the criminal elements, as uh, Esbon Will has indicated. It's the duty of the Kenyan police service to pick out people who maybe they're part of the demonstration, who are armed, or whose intention is just to engage in vandalism. Because, you know, we have got very poor economic times. Maybe somebody has not had a meal for a long time, and he says, let me join this demonstration. When you come across a supermarket, I want to go in and pinch maybe unga, or I want to carry a TV set. Those are the people that the police should be able to identify and separate them. But you see, engaging in, uh, like, say, mass shooting, for lack of a better word, or mass killing, is uh, unacceptable. For me, b because you see... The new constitution has uh, guaranteed a number of uh, social and uh, civil liberties. We cannot uh, allow anybody today to frustrate or sit on uh, civil liberties because we are maturing as a democracy. These are the things which are supposed to be done. And the Kenyan police service has good uh, examples. The way they, whatever there's a demonstration in Israeli, and Israeli has got probably the highest uh, number of uh, weapons, people are facilitated. You actually, even the policemen would uh, guide you. They would even tell you that among these demonstrators, we've got intelligence that there are maybe 10 criminal elements. Let's arrest these guys first so that you enjoy your peaceful demonstration. So nobody should be celebrating today that are people have uh, been shot who are engaging in peaceful demonstration who are merely exercising their civil liberties. It's unacceptable. Right. And again, on the same note, Ben, it's incumbent on the government to call a spade a spade. If uh, people have been killed, it's the, it doesn't add any value for you to say that uh, folks have not been killed. Because uh, at, at the end of the day, the names will come out. <coughs> Even the government's own agencies will come out with the figures. So it's important for the government to appreciate that uh, mistakes have been done and the responsible officers prosecuted for the same. Mutinda, yes, as we I, wind up, this, yeah, if, yeah, if, yeah. even those criminal elements, yes. as uh, Dismas says, even them, when they're identified, they shouldn't be shot. Exactly. Be killed, right? They should be dealt with accordance, in accordance with the rule of law. I agree on that. And you see, it is also not just for the police. Because honestly, if, for instance, we are in a demonstration, and I am with Esbon, and Esbon decides to go, as we go along, he decides to, what do you call this, snatch things from passers-by. As, as a right-thinking person, I'll first know that you're, you're even in danger in my life. Because when these people get, decide to attack back, they won't know who's the thief and who's not the thief. Because if Esbon has snatched something from you and he comes and we are walking together, what will make you know that I have, it is Esbon alone who's the thief and not, not me, as in we are not together? So what I'm trying to say is this. That's why I, and I am talking as someone who has organized demos. Because the thing is, if the, the demo does not have ownership, and if you allow everybody, you know, you can even, <coughs> as, as, as someone who's taking part in the demonstration, you can tell those who are behaving in a way that might put you to risk. Yet when you went out there, that was not your intention. Your intention was to express yourself within what the Constitution allows. Yet, amongst yourselves, you can clearly see people who are doing what the law does not allow. So other than the police singling out these people, it is also incumbent upon the organizers of the demos to ensure that such and you know the, the funny thing is that these characters are always a minority they are always a minority but if you let them lose then they hijack your whole thing and right. everybody out there thinks that actually this is a gang out to do no good All right. so that's what i'm saying so i want to second what this is saying about the police trying to take effort to see who are those who are breaking the law but it is not just upon them it is also upon these other people, because you can imagine we are a thousand people, and we are 50 people among the 1,000 who are out to destroy property, attack other people, and yet the 950 of us are silent. Then we are all being endangered by the actions of these 50. It's so other than ways. the police, we, ways, yeah. yes, we, we, we need right. to also have inbuilt, that's why I said, inbuilt mechanism within the demonstrate, the demonstration itself mm -hmm. to ensure that those who are out to cause mischief are contained. And right. probably even handed over 
to the police All so right. that the police are clear that actually among these people there are people who mean well right. and there are those out to cause harm. Just a few of the highlights of these uh, altercations. Of course, we did talk about that nine-year-old girl, Mora Nyarangi, who was a class four people at Madare Primary School, uh, killed by uh, reported stray bullets. Then on page four of the Sunday Standard, a six-month-old baby fighting for her life in Kisumu after uh, reports indicate she was hit on the head by police who broke into her parents' house in Yalenda estate in Kusumu while pursuing protesters. That is just, of course, just highlights of how, how grave the situation is in terms of those protests. But still on page four, uh, clerics uh, are saying, are calling on the opposition leader, Raila Odinga, and all those aggrieved by the polls uh, to seek peaceful means of resolving this. They are calling also on the president uh, to heal this country. Where should this conversation go, well, as, as, as far as you're concerned, Hezbon? Uh, one, uh, I think I may want to chip in and say that uh, the right to life is uh, a non-derogable right. It is a right that cannot be taken away from any individual. And I think this is enshrined in most constitutions and incidents all over the world. So even uh, as the police try to contain the, the, the demonstrations and the protests, they should understand that all the demonstrators have a right to life. And therefore, the use of live bullets is a threat in itself to that right. But uh, from your question, uh, it's also important to understand that uh, probably this needs some sort of uh, serious uh, communication from, uh, you know, the top principles in this country, the president-elect, President Uhuru Kenyatta, and probably, uh, you know, the right honorable Raila Odinga. And uh, if, if you listened, uh, I listened keenly to uh, President Uhuru Kenyatta's speech uh, after he had just been declared the winner, and he extended an olive branch, you know, to the opposition uh, in, its, in its entirety, NASA and their supporters. And from where I sit, I want to believe that that was a very good way to start this, and he needs to actualize this olive branch. We need to see it from the top. You know, uh, I, I think all these demonstrations can be quelled down if we have some serious communication from the top and understanding you know, that all is not lost. Just like I said, a lot of Kenyans are going through a cocktail of emotions. And you cannot quell that by silence. You cannot quell that by, 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 by making statements. You know, we need to see action. We need to see a situation where the two main you know, uh, players in all this come together and make a joint statement and probably extend that olive branch to some sort of an action that can pacify you know, the emotions that uh, most of the people who feel that they lost an election have, because it is real. It is actually real that uh, majority of Kenyans who voted for NASA uh, are going through emotions. And there are also majority of Kenyans who are celebrating, and those are also emotions, you know. And there is a sense in which when you rub it on the people who lost, you know, by unleashing terror on them, uh, you know, by having reports of people being killed, I mean, it doesn't help the situation. And therefore, from, <coughs> from where I sit, I want to believe that uh, communication is not just a question of making statements. These pronouncements are good, but if we see them followed by concrete actions that will tell Kenyans that, you know what, it is not all lost, you know, because there is a feel in which you realize that uh, the election in Kenya, especially at the presidential level, uh, is a situation where the winner takes it all and the loser is in the call for the next five years. Right. Yeah. Prof, there's more than six million people who voted for the NASA presidential candidate. Um, you know, how, how does the country unite? How, how, how do the leaders unite this country? Those who feel aggrieved, they, yeah. they feel they lost. Yeah. They're going through a cocktail of emotions, like the panelists are saying. And the other half who are celebrating. I mean, I think that um, there are two essential elements of this whole exercise. The candidates have been mobilizing. They have been putting their future in the hands of these citizens, uh, telling everybody, please support me so that I can be president. So these are their foot soldiers. Now, they have been in daily contact with these people on, uh, throughout the campaign. They also have an obligation when the results have been announced, that they, they link up with their supporters and tell them, for example, Raila needs to come out and tell, look, this thing did not go the way we expected, but I want you to uh, manage your emotions as best as you can so that you do not offend the rights of other people. At the same time, I, it's my contention 
that even Uhuru Kenyatta, other than just saying, uh, you are my brothers, he should be saying, the police, these are all the citizens who are protesting, uh, your brothers and sisters. Please use your force, use your, the power you've been given respectfully, so that, you know, you realize that if that policeman takes off the helmet and the uniform, he's an ordinary citizen. And this is what they seem to forget, that when he is not in uniform, he's like those people he is harassing. So I think the communication between the two parties and their supporters needs to be more effective. Furthermore, there is a very interesting thing. Underneath all these emotions, these we call a cocktail of emotions, the, the most uh, visible one is happiness. And the other most visible one is anger. In between there, the, the happiness component, the, the leaders should be trying to manage that happiness so that it doesn't look like it is mocking to, 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 to the loser. And right. the, the loser needs to manage the anger in such a way it doesn't look like it is criminalizing the winner. So I think uh, emotion management is at the top of the agenda at the moment. And in my opinion, the, the government has a greater responsibility to reassure the losers that please, please, the world does not end here. Uh, try and avoid damaging people's property, people's lives. And this at the same time, in my view, the one who is angry gets even angrier when he doesn't hear the government telling these guys who are uh, victimizing all, uh, innocent children mm -hmm. that look, uh, don't go that way, let's change direction. So my feeling is, the two leaders have an ultimate responsibility to come out clearly, effectively. For example, I expect people of the type of the regional commissioners to be saying at the ground level uh, that, that look, not that, the gov that not that the government is going to do this, to do this, no, but saying, look, we, we are all brothers and sisters. The government has a duty. You also have a duty. Let us come together to maintain peace. All right. Many thanks for staying with us here on the program. This is a continuation of our coverage uh, of the post-election analysis of what has been happening, of course, the reactions uh, by different Kenyans to the 2017 general election. When we return after this quick commercial break, we uh, have that post-mortem of what, how the week went, how the uh, different elective positions went. Uh, we'll take a look at how the National Assembly is shaping up the 12th Parliament uh, from what we do know so far, 164 seats in the National Assembly have gone to the Jubilee Party, 119. This includes the members of Parliament, the parliamentary units, as well as the 47 uh, woman representatives, 119 going to NASA. We'll talk about all that, of course, how the Council of Governors will be shaping up. There's a story here on the Standard on Sunday um, by uh, Paul Wafula. Raila, is Raila Odinga the president that Kenya may never have? We'll take a look at all that when we return. Many thanks for staying with us. We'll be back shortly.